Hi, my name is Hatem Akel. I'm an application engineer with Ozen Engineering. This short tutorial will show you how to use the PCI Express template. Uh, as you can see, we have models for every standard. If you open any one of them, uh, you will see these circuits. In these models, uh, what we did is we used filters to present channels. Uh, but for you as a user, you can remove them and replace them with S parameters. And the way you upload this parameters file is you click on this icon and import and from there you can select your uh, as parameter files you can upload one channel minimum one channel uh, or you can upload two or three channels uh, file if you upload more than one channel then you can see the effect of crosstalk on the signal integrity of your signal if you upload one channel, then uh, attach it to the uh, second circuit here. Now, within these circuits, the setup and the graphs are designed according to the specifications. If I double click on the source of our signal, uh, you will find that we entered the data, the data rate, the rising time and the voltage as per the specifications. Also, if you look at the, the equalization setup, uh, FFE, the number of tabs is, uh, is as in the specifications. And the same thing happens on the RX side, which is the iPro. The DFE and the CTLE, uh, and you notice here for the PCIe 5, uh, there is the gain ADC. And based on the gain, if you change the gain, uh, this is a variable. If you change the gain, that will change the second zero of the CTLE. Uh, to know what are uh, the allowed values as per the specifications for the gain, uh, just check the optometric uh, setup. We also have uh, these three circuits at the bottom. So these circuits are used to study the effect of equalization. In this model here, for example, we remove the CTLE. Uh, here we remove the CTLE and the DFE. And in the last circuit, we removed all the equalizations from the TX and from the RX. Uh, so that will allow you to study the effect of equalization on your circuit. Uh, if you run these models, you will get so many graphs and there we will have uh, more specifications. So if I go to, for example, the width spec, you will get something like this, where the limits uh, uh, shown here are uh, as per the specifications. This specifications wants the width at 1 e minus 12 contour to be greater than uh, 0.3. So the way we do it is we simply create this kind of markers, then we copy the delta to a variable and we display this variable as a clean line. Then we put another marker and uh, that's how we know what's our specification. Um, so the Y value represents the I width and it has to be greater than 0.3. You also can see the high spec. Uh, we have here a contour plot. The only problem it's it's a contour plot. Contour plots are like paint. The markers cannot snap to the curve, so you have to move them to snap uh, to them, and that will give you uh, the correct the correct uh, height versus the specifications. As you can see, the spec here is that the delta between these two has to be greater than uh, 15 millivolt peak to peak. And you see, we have here around 311 uh, millivolt peak to peak, uh, simply because we have an ideal structure in, in our circuit. You can uh, see the results of the case where there is no CTLE. In this case, we have the eye diagram. You can uh, take a look at it. And, and by the way, every time you display an eye diagram, to the left, you see all the different parameters of the eye diagram calculated for you. We can also see the eye diagram of the no CTLE and no DFE case. And the last one, uh, 
uh, for no equalizations. Um, and finally, at the last graph we have here is what we call the stressed I. So, so the stressed I is simply the same nominal results, but we add jitter at the input of the receiver. So the way we create the bathtub, if uh, you want to have more of them, more cases, you go a rectangular plot and from here you activate this option, which is distributing, uh, adding jitter. As you can see here, you can override the numbers and you can add random, deterministic, sinusoidal, and DSD1. You can also add noise if you want. Uh, then generate the bathtub and from there you can tell the effect of the jitter on the width of your eye. Going back to the circuit, I mentioned that you can import as parameter files. Uh, there is another way where you have HFSS models, for example. Uh, what you can do is copy your HFSS model inside this template. Then you create a dynamic link. So instead of getting an S parameters uh, file, you can now uh, create a dynamic link with an HFSS model. And there are uh, so many videos. Uh, I will I will add a link to one of them that shows how to create that dynamic link. Now this project has also uh, more other stuff related to the specifications, for example the returnals. There's a spec on the returnals. Uh, if you look at the results that is on the differential, you will find the spec, the limit lines. And actually what the standards are saying is that uh, if, for example, you are studying uh, PCIe 5, then the spec is from DC to 16 gig. Uh, anything beyond that is not part of that spec. Same thing if you are doing, for example, PCIe 3. It is from 0 to 4 gig, and after 4 gig there is no spec. Uh, so, so, that, so that's how you read it. Uh, so we have a graph uh, for the differential return loss and another one for the common mode uh, return loss. Now we have uh, also uh, uh, other calculations uh, like uh, of the skew between differential lines. Of course, if you go to that circuit, you need to have at least a model of two channels. Uh, there are also the skew between P and N. Uh, for people who are interested in knowing how much is the skew between uh, P and N, this circuit will do it and it will calculate the skew, not based on physical information or group delay, no, it takes the differential and the common results. It uses a complicated formula like the one you see here in order to be able to calculate the skew between P and N in the proper way. We also have the TDR, the TDR circuit, which is uh, again a very simple circuit as you can see. We have the TDR probe. You can use it to study the impedance within your channel. And the last circuit I would like to talk about it is the crosstalk debugging. This is a very important addition to the project. It allows you to debug crosstalk, whether, whether you are looking at the crosstalk in your simulation or you are looking at the crosstalk in your measurement. All you need to do is to bring the measurements or the simulations of two channels, plug them here, and immediately the system will give you, uh, will, will study the two analysis and uh, will tell you exactly the location of uh, the crosstalk. Uh, so you see here the first line the, uh, will be the green one, represent the victim's TDR, which will show uh, you the differential, the different transitions within your victim. Uh, but the other curve will show the crosstalk where the crosstalk is happening and how much is the amplitude of the crosstalk at each one of these bad locations and by looking at both these two curves you will be able to tell where the crosstalk is happening then you can focus on the ones with the worst amplitude and you can improve the isolation in these locations to suppress crosstalk and that's it uh, thank you for listening